can tell you this is the first piece next to the midbrain here because it still has acted up here. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's study this midbrain first. So the more obvious thing of the midbrain is the substantia nigra and the circulaqueduct, yes. the pericarpoductal drain, the tegmentum inside. So this is also a transitional piece of the midbrain. So substantia nigra a bit of red nucleus inside. It's a very thick piece because then someone tried to cut it thinner. It's three little peduncles. On to mesencephalic piece from that midbrain coming once. It still has a piece of the substantia nigra here. It's partly hot because the peduncles, which are nicely dark here, have become very broken up into pieces here to support the spinal tract. Minus whitish autocerebellar fibers crisscrossing here. This area is pons because we have a major linguistic separating the basis pons from the tegmentum. This tegmentum is still transitional from midbrain to pons because it still have stream up and up here. It's not yet fourth ventricle. So this is number two. Now you're left with these pieces here. Definitely the biggest part is the uh, part with the fourth ventricle. These two are top contenders for the mid, mid to bottom parts. These two are small. So this is suspicious whether this is part of that or it's part of the medalla. So how can you tell if it's medalla? Pyramid. Pyramid, but this isn't the pyramid. pyramid. Are <laughs> no, it's not. So actually, it's a bit obliquely <laughs> cut. So it's actually part here. Uh, so this is piece number two. Because of the dunkles. Okay. So it was cut easy, uh, obliquely. That's why this particular midbrain has still has the floor of the aqueduct. This is tectal here. The, the roof of the ventricle, but it gets lost here at the back. Okay. So this is definitely pons because of the water cellular fibers. This I, they may have come from two different brains also. <laughs> this may be the midbrain of the brain. This is the interpeduncular fossa uh, where you look for the third nerve coming out here. I actually still see it coming out uh, underneath the spia. Yeah. So the interpenocular fossa. What to see in this? The major lemniscus. The substantia nigra in this pons mesencephalic piece. So we're left with these two, these three pieces here. Okay. Identifying major lemniscus. Basis point is with the crisscrossing whitish on the cerebellar fibers and the dark corticus spinal tap, the floor of the forehead ventricle, the local cerulus, which are spots there. So, tegmentum is here. This appears to be part of a uh, superior cerebellar pedonto. It's on top because on the sides would be the middle cerebellar pedonto. This part, this piece of pons. Again, you still see the major lemniscus, the crisscrossing pons, the cerebellar fibers, which appear to be grouping again together. Comparing this piece and this piece, these are even more put together. So they're separated and now they're reuniting the former pyramids between these two pieces. Starting from the pyramid here. So they're coalescing. So this is the fourth ventricle in the obex. So this is, this is the cut where the six and the seventh are supposed to be. You so have a prominent bump here, which is your facial colliculus on either side. This part is more. Cross-trot is higher up. 
So when the pyramids start to form, so now you're left with these three pieces here. Now where is the pyramid here? The one with so, the olive. So you have an open medalla and a closed medalla. Open here. So which is dorsal and which is ventral. And we go by size, it gets smaller and smaller to become the corn. This is the biggest, it happens to still have codex there, where your area postrema is. The area postrema and the hypoglossal nucleus are there. So when you vomit, you stick out your tongue. So these are the pyramids, which are the continuation of this, this coalescing fibers here. So they form the pyramids now. So pyramids go down, so they're dark. Here there's a gray matter, white matter structure inside the olive, your inferior olivary nucleus, and your tegmentum. So if you flip this piece around, it still looks the same. So this is the part where the visual meniscus are originally horizontal, start to become vertical, sitting on top of the pyramids. So pyramids, olives, the visual meniscus standing up where it's lying down, standing up. So these are the areas where the nucleus gracilis and the nucleus caniato start to uh, form. So this is open, becoming a closed medalla, becoming like a spinal cord. This is still medalla because you can still see the pyramids in the medial of this sitting on top of it. The prominent bumps of the gracile tubercle and then Slightly lateral, the nucleus, the uh, cuneate. Yeah. So, comparing this side and this side, you no longer see the pyramid and the visual discus nicely on top of each other. It's this area when the pyramid starts to send its arm fibers first, then below the leg fibers to the other side, to the cervical part. So, you no longer see the pyramids here. You still see a bit of pyramid, which is the pyramids for the legs crossing. Then, if you look at the back, it's still not well formed, but you start to see the beginnings of a butterfly inside. So, this is on top, this is the pyramid. You still see a bit of pyramid there. But the pyramid is no longer well seen here, that's already crossed. So arms first and then legs later on down, further down. So you don't, st you still don't see the dorsal horns on top and the pyramids. The pyramids will become the anterior horn, and your your sensory tracts on top in the cord, they become the dorsal horns. So dorsal is sensory, ventral is motor. So there's supposed to be a Horrid piece, you know, I thought we saw it earlier, no, or a different ring. So it's a smaller piece than this, just a cervical horrid.